Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're not following me on Instagram, make sure to check me out at Kimberly Rose Platt because I have a ton of content over, over there. I'm only uploading videos on here about every two weeks. So if you want more info, more resources, more in stuff from me, make sure to check me out on there. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about food guilt and some of the food rules that we create for ourselves and the three-step process that I have for breaking these down. Many of us are coming from a long-term dieting, constantly restricting, constantly trying to lose that last 10 pounds or last 20 pounds or having the yo-yo dieting, looking for extremes, quick fixes, all of that fun stuff. Um, so we've kind of lost the trust that we have in ourselves. We've kind of lost the trust that we have in knowing what to eat and knowing how to eat, knowing when to eat, all of that stuff. And we've created all these rules from all the different diets that we've done or the lots of messaging that's out there about nutrition. Um, and nutrition's always changing. So even though they may have said like, don't eat eggs, now they say, go eat eggs. And then they say, don't eat eggs. So it's always constantly changing, but it can create these food rules and create guilt in our minds about when we're eating stuff that we don't think is healthy for us or foods that um, following the rules that we feel like we're told not to do, like eating at night, or eating carbs after dark or something along those lines. So we've created all of these little things and the most important piece is to try to let go of some of the guilt that we feel around these and f let go of some of the shame that we feel about eating and let go of all the mental chatter that we're dealing with. And I've changed a lot of the stuff that I've been talking about lately. So I know that it, many of you follow me for the HA recovery, but I do think after recovery and after you get to a healthy place and after you clean up the, all the mental chatter that I was just talking about, you can get to a place where you have balance and you have a healthy relationship with food and you can potentially get to a place where you can make some modifications, do a body recomp, and you can get to a place where you um, aren't obsessed about the way your body looks, but you want to do things for the long term. You want that lifestyle change. You want to include fitness and working out and in, in a less obsessive and restrictive way. And it is possible. It definitely is possible. You need to get over some of the food relationship, the body relationship, the mind relationship stuff that you're dealing with first. The first step of this is awareness. So that is the number one tool that I use with my clients is becoming more aware of the actions you're taking, becoming more aware of the thoughts you have in your head. So journaling works great for this. Some of the questions that you should be asking yourself are what type of labels do I have around food? Things like junk food, bad food, good food, organic, non-organic. Non uh, whatever it may be, some of the food rules that you have for yourself um, already set up, like only eating at, till like eight o'clock p.m. or something like that. So asking yourself, what type of things am I doing that I'm following that aren't helpful? So I don't think there's anything wrong if we create our own personal rules or guidelines, as long as they don't make us feel like suppressed or um, like confined by any means. So, you know, for me, it may be like my food rule is like, I always have a snack at night. That's my food rule. Um, I enjoy it. I know it works for me. It actually helps me in the long run become more consistent. So if you have food rules that help you become more consistent that aren't super restrictive or rigid or leave this weird feeling to you, then keep them in your lives. But start to recognize the time that you know, sugary foods are bad, Oreos are bad, this is bad, this is, you know, things like that aren't helpful. So making sure you make a list of all that stuff or even a, like a, doing a thought download about, you know, what foods are good and which ones I'm thinking are bad is helpful too. Even just getting that initial first piece of awareness is going to be so good for you. And so is key in changing the way you think about this stuff. So if you recognize that you really feel guilty after having five Oreos or one Oreo or a chocolate chip cookie or um, even things like mayonnaise or maybe it's eating at night or you know eating 2,000 calories versus 1,800 calories or whatever that is for you, just recognizing that you're feeling this way or recognizing the feelings that are coming up, the thoughts that are coming up around this is going to be helpful in order for you to transition to the next two steps. The next step in this process is challenge yourselves, challenge these thoughts. So when it says um, eating a cookie is bad or something like that, you can challenge yourself saying, I know a cookie is not a bad thing, it's not as nutrient dense and it's, it can be part of my life of 80-20 in moderation. 
So finding little challenges against any of the thoughts that you're having, foods are bad or good or junk foods, maybe transitioning thoughts of saying, rather than junk foods, you make it a switch to fun foods and just challenging these beliefs, challenging them, knowing they're not true, like low carb diet's the only way to lose weight or keto's the only way to go. You can get rid of these thoughts with the, challenging them with secondary thoughts and it's thoughts that you can switch over to in the future. So challenging these thoughts and coming up with new thoughts that are gonna be more helpful for you. And just challenging the beliefs that you know aren't true, but you've just ingrained in your head from the prior dieting, from the prior, you know, quick fixes from whatever you had done in the past. So the third piece is implement this change. So you're challenging yourself again by actually taking action on them. So maybe it's um, low carb is the only way to go and you start introducing carbs and you show yourself that you can do it or you can't eat after 8 p.m. and you start challenging yourself and eating after 8 p.m. So implement, this is probably the hardest piece of it. It's kind of what we talked about, exposure and things like that, and exposing yourself and, and challenging yourself by doing, taking action and doing the opposite of what you've been telling yourself. So maybe it's like, I have to eat at noon and you say, no, I'm gonna eat when I'm hungry and you eat at 11 o'clock. So this is the three-step process that I use working with my clients and this is a really good tool. These are good tools for you to implement for yourself. And as I said, even just getting that awareness piece is eye-opening for many people. And they recognize how they're reacting and how the actions that they're taking are all based on these thought processes they have, the food rules they have, all the reasons they're feeling guilty, they're feeling shame, they're feeling all these feelings that are just so negative and not helping them create any consistency or any balance in their lives. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Let me know if you try this out. I'd love to hear more about it. And make sure to check me out on Instagram. Like, follow, subscribe. Talk to you guys later.